In this demo video, we're going to look at the image processing toolbox, which is a way of applying image filters inside Dragonfly. The data set we have loaded right now is a dry sand pack taken from the Digital Rocks portal. Um, with my data set loaded, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tools and choose Image Processing Toolbox. Here, this puts me in a workspace that allows me to preview and compute image filters. The first time you load it, you may find the image processing panel uh, over on the left, but you can undock it and move it to the middle like I have here. What this workspace allows you to do is construct one or more filters in sequence that allow you to operate on your images. So let me demonstrate. Here in the image processing panel, I have a number one for my first operation. I'm going to click in this drop down box, and what I'd like to do is find my favorite, uh, my favorite let's see which filter do I wish to use we'll find my favorite uh, smoothing filter actually in this case we want to do a sharpening filter first um, so I can scroll down and find the category uh, I have segmentation and then shading I have sharpening so I'll choose an unsharp mask and I have this filter selected the input for the filter is the only image channel I have loaded my dry sand and the output will by default be called dry sand unsharp you can change this name if you like the parameters for this filter are spelled out here I'll make it a 3d kernel uh, I'll zoom in on the image and what I'll do is I'll increase the unsharp factor and increase the standard deviation and I'll ask for a preview so what you can see over here is on the scene views synchronizer I have zoom and position checked um, if I check window leveling then what this means is if I adjust the window leveling of the image on the left the image on the right will also have its window leveling I can pan and zoom and it's synchronized now the image preview is only computed for the current slice and the area that's viewed on screen so this is all that was previewed if I like the filter parameters, I might scroll through to another slice and ask for another preview. Now, we've only done one filter. We've done a sharpening filter. We've introduced a little bit of noise, but we could follow it up by a smoothing filter. So I have one operation, the unsharp mask. If I tell it I want to add a second operation, operation two, now I can choose my favorite smoothing filter, which is a mean shift. So if I type mean, it goes directly to mean, and then I can scroll down to mean shift. So in this case, the unsharp filter is set to take dry sand as input and create an output called dry sand unsharp. Then the mean shift is set to take the dry sand unsharp and then pass it through the mean shift filter and call it. Uh, so image A gets converted to B, which gets converted to image C. Uh, for this image filter, uh, I always like to set the noise spread to the bit depth of my image. So if this is a 16-bit image, then I'll choose 65535. Now if I click uh, Compute All Previews, what I can do in this image is if I select the first image, then I see the output of the first filter. And if I select the second filter, then I see the output of the second. So we can see that it's done some sharpening and then a little bit of smoothing, but I still have a pretty good sharp edges. If I wanted to inspect how sharp those edges are, uh, I could use the annotate panel, for example, and I could probe uh, across a few grains like this. Now I have a ruler in my workspace. So when I click the profile, uh, I can set some parameters. So for example, I can average over a disk and we can see what the output of my filter looks like. My dry sand image looks like this. After I've done the uh, sharpening, you can see the sharpening gives deeper valleys and but it's introduced a little bit of noise and so after I've done some smoothing afterwards I still have pretty good depth in the valley but I've smoothed things out a little bit so you can see uh, a one-dimensional probe of your image like that now in this panel we've set up a tandem filter unsharp followed by mean shift now in my case I don't actually need to keep the output of the unsharp so I will say that under the output I don't care about keeping the unsharp, I just want the output after the mean shift. Now I can go ahead and click apply and this set of operations will then generate a new image stack. So right now it's applying the unsharp filter to the dry sand um, and it's already finished and now it's applying the mean shift to the, uh, the sharpened image. And the result will be one new image channel which has been uh, sharpened and then smoothed. So we'll wait for that to finish. 
All right, it's done. Now, uh, I also want to look at another image filter that I like to use. I'm going to uh, remove the second filter. And uh, one filter that I use quite often is the Sobel. So we'll type Sobel. And uh, of course, I could, uh, I'm going to add an output now so that Sobel is captured. I could, of course, uh, do a 3D Sobel um, with no pre smoothing. And I could pass this as the input. And I can ask for a preview. Now what I'd like to do in this is I use the Sobel so often that I would like to save this filter so that I don't have to come back into the image processing toolbox to use it. I'm going to click Save Operations. You're going to see what I mean here in a minute. I'm just going to title it Sobel 3D uh, No, no Pre-Smooth and I click Save um, and I uh, click the X button. Now, I can go ahead and close the image processing toolbox. So I have my dry sand, and then I have what's been sharpened and then smoothed. If I wanted to apply a Sobel on either of these images, I can come over here and choose the image processing panel. So I can choose the image I want to smooth. Let's choose the uh, dry sand. And then if I want to apply uh, the Sobel, I can look in my list of operations, and Sobel is here. Now, at this point, I can apply it. And this means I can get a new Sobel processed edge enhanced image without having to go into the image processing toolbox. So the image processing toolbox is useful when you want to test out parameters and experiment and set up a sequence of filters. But if you're going to do the same filters over and over again, then you might save the operation so they're accessible from this panel. OK. So that shows you how you can do some image processing. And we're going to save this and we're going to use this in the next video where we look at watershed transforms. Uh, so that's the end of this video on image processing toolbox.